What can wash away my sin? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. What can make me whole again? Nothing but the blood of Jesus. Amen. It's so good to hear from the St. John's Baptist Church Men's Choir. Amen. Amen.
You see what happens when pastor goes on vacation? <laughs> amen. The Lord put in my spirit that the men, amen, the men have a voice and we should use it. And it's good to see men standing up. Good to see men in the church. Praise God. Amen. Good to see men in the church. Amen. Amen. Giving all honor to the men who are standing up as godly men here in this time and season. Praise God for you. Giving all praise and honor to the Lord Jesus Christ, who is the head of my life. I love the Lord, and I know that he loves me. I do thank God, not, not just also for the men, but I thank God for the women as well. Amen. 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 Truth be told, if the women stop coming to church, we won't be having church. <laughs> Amen. 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 The women's conference, the women's workshop was phenomenal. I'm grateful for uh, Dr. Shari Robinson and Elder Robinson for preparing such a magnificent uh, uh, blessing for us in worship. Also thank God for my wife, amen. And then the Bible says it's not good for man to be alone. Amen, I thank God for my wife. She has to deal with all these different things I come up with, amen. Amen, for ministry. Running by her to see if I haven't lost my mind. And, you know, the Bible teaches us about confirmation, amen. You know, for those of us who are married, sometimes your husband might say something. You might be like, you, you might have lost your mind on that one. <laughs> it's all right. It's all right. We want to be mindful about uh, uh, the Reed family and the upcoming home going service here at St. John's. I am in contact with the family, as many of you are. And so there will be. Uh, home going service here at St. John's. So we will come together and plan and do our best to honor what the Lord has done through our honorary deacon, Clifton Reed. Amen. 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 Uh, First Lady was talking about the associational life of the church and how the church needs to be in relation to other churches. Amen. Not just relationships of old, but we need to have fresh relationships in these times. So there is an opportunity. She mentioned she's going to be on a panel at Calvary Baptist Church. Let us show ourselves friendly Amen. and walk through the doors of Calvary Baptist Church. Amen. Amen. Now we've welcomed folks here and they've come here. We've had Calvary here on several occasions. They had a couple of members from their church here for the women's meeting. Seven last words, they are in support. Even uh, Deacon Lattimore came out and worked with uh, Brother West and we, we worked on the sound. So clearly they befriended us and we need to show the same friendship to them. And uh, the, the women are on fire. Praise God. The women are on fire. Yes. The spark was lit yesterday, amen, at the workshop. I said, let's not let that spark die out. And so we do have revival coming up next month, where we have Reverend Dr. Uh, Vivian Hicks. We also have Reverend Brenda Brown, and we have Reverend Laura Reyes, amen. That's intentional. We're going to have three strong women of God bringing the word, amen, amen, here at St. John's Baptist Church. Let's prepare for revival, and let's not forget that Women's Week, Women's Weekend is going to be a great weekend. And, and for these things that are going on, and it, we have emphasis on women leadership, we should be in the number, amen. Hey, all of us who can, especially the women, amen, lights, amen, lights, amen, amen. Don't crucify me over that. But ultimately, I'm trying to get us into a position 
where we can be inspired for all that we have coming at us. Amen. We do miss you, Sister Lacey. I know you're online. We miss you today. Amen. And I miss my mic of my buddy running around saying, hey, pastor. Hey, man. My little buddy. There is a word from the Lord. Word from the Lord today is coming from Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Amen. If you're able to stand, please stand for the reading of God's word. And just one more point of order before I move forward with the reading of the scripture. For those who don't know, amen, these folks sitting in this pew over here, that's my family. That's my church family. That's New Hope Baptist Church. And that's Mother Clark, who's wearing that fine hat, and she's dressed to match, looking phenomenal this morning. So just give it up for New Hope Baptist Church. That's my church family. Amen. Amen. A lot of love for New Hope Baptist Church. And, and New Hope was in the, in the fellowship yesterday as well. And so, again, let us continue to show ourselves friendly. The word of God reads as thus. Matthew chapter 4, verses 1 through 11. Then Jesus was led by the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted by the devil. After fasting 40 days and 40 nights, he was hungry. In modern day words, we will say he was hungry. The tempter came to him and said, if you are the son of God, tell these stones to become bread. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by the bread alone, but on every word. That comes from the mouth of God. Got to repeat that one. Jesus answered, it is written, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes from the mouth of God. And the devil took him to the holy city and had him stand on the heights points of the temple. If you are the son of God, he said, throw yourself down. For it is written, he will command his angels concerning you and they will lift you up in their hands so that you will not strike your foot against the stone. Jesus answered him, it is also written, do not put the Lord your God to the test. And again, the devil took him to a very high mountain and showed him all the kingdoms of the world and splendor. And all this I will give you, he said, if you will bow down and worship me. Jesus said to him, away from me, Satan, for it is written, worship the Lord your God, serve him alone, serve him only. Then the devil left him and angels came and attended to him. Please hold on to this thought, this theme, this idea, word, word. Gracious and wise heavenly father, I ask that I decrease so that you may increase and your people only hear a word from you. We pray heavenly father that it's not just a word, but a life changing word, a quickening word, a word to bring us alive, be shaped and mold, more like Jesus, more like children of God, built up, in you for such a time as this. We love you and we praise and adore you. It's the name of Jesus Christ that we pray. Amen. 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 You may be seated in the presence of God. Amen. The word. The emphasis today is on the word. Praise God. Pardon me one second here. The word. How many of you are familiar with the word of God? Just by a show of hands. How many of you are familiar with the word of God? Amen. I see one, I saw two, three, four hands. All right, five hands. About half, all right. I'm gonna ask that question again. How many of you are familiar with the word of God? Uh, 
All right. We got about 80% of you. I don't know what was going on behind me. Did we get 100% back here? <laughs> <laughs> Amen. The word of God, the word of God. All right. Thus, thus saith the Lord. We find ourselves in a world today where we're being compounded by words. There are words that are coming across the internet, words from advertising, words that we get from coaches like Bill Belichick, words that we have from the political arena that's coming from the Ukraine and Russia and the United States. We have a word every day and every which way we turn. There's a word from our friends, our so-called friends, words about where to find the hottest music, where to get a good party. We hear a word, a word of encouragement at times, but by the grace of God, sometimes we hear a word of discouragement. We need to understand that in all the words that we hear, there is a word from the Lord. And this is where things get quiet because we tend to have great comfort in understanding the word that we could receive from somebody else. Just give me the answer. Give me the method. Show me where, where I can get whatever I'm looking for. But when we say what you're looking for comes from Jesus Christ and what you need is coming from your heavenly father. And what you desire can be found in the mighty power of the Holy Spirit. That's when things get quiet, even for the children of God. Because at times, we just are not as comfortable to walk in the authority of God's word. And when we see Jesus, our example, Jesus, the one who came down through 42 generations, born under the law for our benefit. He who did not know sin became sin for us. When we see Jesus, even as a child, he has great comfort with the word of God. How do we know this? Because we find Jesus in the temple teaching as one with the authority of God and not as the scribes. Even our children need to know the word. Our children need to have the word of God in their hearts, just like Jesus. Jesus is our example. Amen. Amen. We see that this word that Jesus had, it wasn't just situational. It was a word that he held in his heart day to day. It's a word that kept him as he grew up, become a young man. Jesus Christ relied on the word, not just the Holy Spirit, but he relied on the word. And when we look into the Bible and we see Jesus at his baptism, Jesus Christ is being baptized by John the Baptist, goes down into the Jordan River. He's baptized to fulfill all righteousness. And when he comes out the water, the Holy Spirit falls on him like a dove. And that wasn't uh, the only thing, that he had the Holy Spirit. And then it was this Holy Spirit, he, the Holy Spirit, led him into the wilderness, but he wasn't there with just the Holy Spirit. He was there also with the word of God. We need the word of God. We need the word of God because we too are led into the wilderness. We find ourselves in wilderness times. I don't know what's going on in your row or in your pew or up here in this choir loft or pulpit, but we find ourselves in wilderness times. As Christians, as people of God, we must let the Holy Spirit lead us and show us the way. First John 4 and 3 says, this is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us the Holy Spirit. I just share it with you that Jesus was there and he had the Holy Spirit come upon him. And we too have the Holy Spirit living inside of us as children of God, as people of God. John 14, 15 and 17 says, if you love me, keep my commands. And I will ask the Father and he will give you another advocate to help you and be with you forever. The spirit of truth, 
The world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him, but you know him. For he lives with you and will be in you. We have the Holy Spirit living in us. In us, the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, the same way Jesus Christ was baptized, Holy Spirit came upon him. It's the same way that we too have the Holy Spirit. However, as people of God, we must know that we have the Holy Spirit, not just to sit there dormant, not just to listen to what we have to say and do, but we have the Holy Spirit to lead us in the way that God would direct us. It was the Holy Spirit that led Jesus Christ into the wilderness. Verse one of chapter four says, Jesus Christ was led by the Spirit to the wilderness. All of us as children of God have wilderness experiences. It's not just the adults, but even the children. Our children will battle wilderness experiences. We cannot make believe that just because we're the parent and we're making all this provision that God has given us and this hedge of protection on our children that they won't go through something. Children are going through wilderness experiences whether we recognize it or not. It's up to us to keep it real and understand that yes, we have our experiences, but our children do as well. Wilderness experience is a, a rocky experience. It is a dry experience. It is a wasteland of sorts. And it can attack or come upon us in many different facets of life. But no matter where you are and what you find yourself going through, whether you're a child or whether you're an adult, whether you're a teen, whether you're a young adult, no matter what age you are in life, God is always with you in the wilderness. God is always with us. We are never alone in the wilderness. Our Lord is there in the wilderness with us no matter how lonely we feel. And life can feel lonely at times. The Bible teaches us to keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with what you have. Because God has said, this is the word of the Lord. This is what the, the living God has said for his children. Never will I leave you and never will I forsake you. You will never be alone. Never be alone. We have to face our wilderness experience with the understanding that the Holy Spirit of God lives in us. And not only that, that we also have the authority of God's word. We as children of God, even the young, little, tender children of God can walk in the authority of God's word. This is where we get quiet because we're not comfortable with that. We don't, we don't practice that. We just come in here and go through a religious routine. But the truth of the matter is, is that we can walk in the authority of God's word in the everyday of life. You can look at Israel and see this. In the wilderness, God was teaching them and molding them for 40 years. They were in the wilderness after the 400 years of Egyptian captivity. They were freed by the Lord. They spent 40 years in the wilderness. And in that experience, the Lord provided manna from heaven. They would pick up that manna for six days, learning to trust God to provide. They would pick up that manna for six days, knowing day by day, expecting that the Lord was going to make it happen again. They were learning how to trust God. They were learning how to be in relationship with God day by day by picking up the man. On the sixth day, they will pick up double because on the seventh day, they will have to rest. That means for five of the days, they would pick up manna, but they had to have the faith to know on the sixth day, there will be double for their trouble. We see this 
in the wilderness experience of Israel, as we're learning to build our faith, looking back into what happened in the Bible. We also see this here in the text today, because Jesus Christ was led into the wilderness for 40 days. We had the 40 years, but now we have the 40 days. And he's there in the wilderness for 40 days. He's trusting the Father. He's being obedient to the Father. He's empowered by the Holy Spirit, yet he's living in a fleshly body. You know as well as I do that the body can take certain things, but there are some things that causes the body to break down. And there's nothing like being hungry, real hunger, real starvation. Jesus is hungry. He's in the wilderness for 40 days. And this is when he gets attacked by Satan. When you're at your lowest point, when you're, when you're going all out for the Lord and you feel like you can't do anymore and your faith is put to the test, then the tempter comes. Where is your God now? Where is the Lord now? As a matter of fact, if you claim to be as much of a Christian as you say you are, then here comes Satan trying to provoke you to do something, to step out of bounds of what the Lord would have for you to do. As people of God want to learn to resist the devil, he'll flee from you. Let's not step out of bounds of what God has provided for his children. Let us be obedient like Jesus. Knowing that even in the wilderness that God is working something good out for us in the wilderness. Even with Satan all around, God is still working something good for us. And the only way to do that is if we have his Holy Spirit and we're standing on God's word. we got to stand on the word. We can't resist experiences in life. We have to go through experiences in life with the Holy Spirit and God's word. Because the Bible teaches in Romans 8 and 28, and we know that in all things, God works for good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. All things are working for good. We know that they work according to the purpose of the Lord. Then let us not resist. Let us go through it. Even though we may have to cry at times. Let us go through it with the might and power of the Holy Spirit and strength of the word of God. Let us walk, not rebelliously, but obedient to the word of God. We learn here in Galatians 5 and 16. So I say, walk by the Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit. And the spirit what is contrary to the flesh. They are in conflict with each other. So that you are not to do whatever you want. But if you are led by the spirit. You are not under the law. What that saying is as people of God. We need to be spirit led. And we need to be shaped by the word of God. As Christians, as people of God, we ought to apply the word of God in our everyday lives. Each time that Satan comes up to Jesus, Jesus tells him, it is written. It is written. Jesus, full of the spirit, but standing on the word. It is written. Man should not live by bread alone, but by every word that comes out of the mouth of God. It is written. Do not put the Lord your God to the test. It is written, worship the Lord your God only. Worship the Lord your God only. It is written, when we look at that first point, every word that comes out of the mouth of God. You know, Jesus again, he said these things when he was hungry. He said these things when he was at a moment of weakness. Jesus Christ is, he's hungry and under demonic attack. But we know that in your weakness, that the strength of the Lord is made perfect. <laughs> Says here, a severe lack of food for a prolonged time has devastating effects on the body. When in face with starvation, the body fights back. The first day without food is like the overnight fast between dinner one night and breakfast the next morning. Energy levels are low, but pick up with the morning meal. 
Within days, faced with nothing to eat, the body begins feeding on itself. The body starts to consume energy stores, carbohydrates, fats, and proteins. Then again, the body begins to go through a metabolic transformation. The metabolism slows down. The body cannot regulate its temperature anymore. Kidney function is beginning to become impaired. The immune system weakens. When the body uses its reserves to provide basic energy needs, it can no longer supply necessary nutrients to vital organs and tissues. The heart, the lungs, the ovaries, and the testes shrink. Muscles shrink, and people feel weak, extremely weak. Body temperature drops, and people can feel chilled. People become irritable and become difficult um, to concentrate. Basically, what this is saying is, is that when we don't eat, we're wasting away, and eventually death will set in. If we don't eat physical food, we die. And if we don't eat spiritual food, we also die. Same in the natural as it is in the spiritual. Spiritual food is for our spiritual nourishment, strength in the Lord. No fasting, no prayer, no praise, no worship, no word, no way we will be able to deal with wilderness experiences. We'll end up becoming a humpback Christian, a humpback Christian. Knowing I got to wait over here and a wait over here and a wait over here. And we walking around like, praise the Lord, sister. God is good, sister. Good to see you in the church. But I'm weighed down and I'm not living out the authority of the Lord and the word of God in my life. So I can stand up straight and face the times of trouble. We need the word of God. The word of God is spiritual nourishment. The word of God strengthens us deep down in the soul. The word of God, it, it, it shapes and molds us. It, it prepares us to glorify our Heavenly Father. 2 Timothy 3, 16 and 17 preaches, all scripture is God breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking, correcting, and training in righteousness so that the servant of God may be thoroughly equipped for every good work. Therefore, we need the word of God to be equipped for every work that the Lord would have us to do. Jesus Christ relied on the word of God as should we. He didn't just rely on the word, but he knew the word. When you know something is not just book knowledge, you know it because you apply it. The best way to know is to experience God. Give the Lord a try. Before you bought that car that's in the parking lot, you tried it before you bought it. Well, you need to give the good Lord a try. Try out Genesis to Revelation and see what the Lord would do. Try before you buy what this preacher is talking about. And when you know the word of, word of the Lord, you will be able to recall and apply. Psalms 119 and 11 says, I have hidden your word in my heart that I might not sin against you. And when you know the word of God, you just don't have it here on Sunday morning. You don't have it just on Christmas and Easter, but the word of God is in your heart there permanently. It's there for the Holy Spirit to conjure up. It's there for when the test of trial comes that you can fall back and lean and stand on the word of God no matter what comes your way because God is always there if we would just stand on the word. Word of God is necessary and God's word is in our heart. It protects us from false doctrine and Satan was attacking Jesus and Satan took a scripture from the Old Testament and twisted it when you know the word of God, you just won't be twisted left and right because you'll know for yourself, thus saith the Lord. I know it because I heard it preached. I know it because I watched it lived out and with the saints around me. I know it because when I was deep down and in the bottomless pit that I stood in the word of God myself. And when I stood on God's word, I came to understand that it's true. So you can't tell me what Jesus is saying because I know, because I experienced Jesus for myself. I had the word of God. I had the word of God in me. So don't try to take scripture out of context. Folks will come and take scripture out of historical context. Folks will come and take scripture out of literary context. Folks will come and take scripture out of semantic context. 
They'll come and take scripture out of cultural context. Preachers will take scripture out of hermeneutical context. There are those who will take scripture out of theological context. But when you're filled with the spirit and you know the Lord yourself and you tried his word yourself, there's nothing no Satan, no unregenerate person can tell you about the Lord because you're standing on your own personal experience in the word of God. We need to know the word and practice the word like Jesus. As Christians, as God people, we have the authority. We have the authority to rebuke. We have the authority to stand on the word of God. Jesus did not get in a big debate with Satan. All he said is, it is written. He said it's written and he rebuked Satan. He said it's written and he did it at a moment of weakness. He didn't rely on might. He didn't rely on power, but he relied on the Holy Spirit while he was delivering God's word. It is written. We need to have an it is written spirit. But to have an it is written spirit, you have to know what is written. It is written that the Lord will make you the head and not the tail. If you pay attention to the commands of the Lord, you will know your God that he will give you this day. And if you carefully follow them, the commands of the Lord, you will always be at the top and never find yourself at the bottom. Because it is written that in all things, you're more than a conqueror than him who loves you. It is written, you are a chosen people, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, God's special possession, that you may declare the praises of the Lord, who called you out of darkness and to the marvelous light. It is written, the Lord is my light and my salvation. Who shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Who shall I be afraid when the wicked advance against me? The he tried to devour me. It is my enemies, my foes, who will stumble and fall. Because it is written, all things work together for the good, for those who love the Lord. It is written, you meant it for evil. God meant it for good. It is written that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. That whosoever believe in Jesus, believe in him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. We need uh, it is written spirit. We need uh, the word of God to stand uh, in the wilderness, uh, to stand uh, and glorify our Father, to stand just like Jesus and be obedient and go through uh, the wilderness experience. It gets dry sometimes, it's rocky sometimes, it's hard sometimes, but when uh, the devil's going up, the Christian's going down, down to the knees, down to pray, down to the knees, down to read scripture, down, down to the knees, worshiping God. Lord, you're good. Lord, you're mighty. I praise you. I adore you. The Christian will lean on the word, know the word, apply the word, live the word, remember the word, get the word deep down on the inside. That's why we are not like everybody else. God is with us. God before us. God is in us. God has given us his word. We need to walk in the authority of the word of God. We need to trust the word of God. Slam before your body. Slam again. Try the word and see what the Lord will do. We need to try the word of God. We need a word. A word from the Lord. As we learn the word of God, 
it will help us to deal with the wilderness of life. Whether you find yourself in the wilderness of deep depression or wilderness of low self-esteem, you find yourself in the wilderness of confusion, and Satan is the father of confusion. You find yourself in a wilderness of victimization. Bad things have happened to you, but you haven't been able to let them go. You find yourself in the wilderness of diagnosis and ailments and bad news, a wilderness of guilt and shame, a wilderness of fatigue. I'm just tired. I'm tired and I'm sick and tired. We find ourselves in this wilderness. We need to know we have the Holy Spirit of God, Amen. but we also need to walk in the authority of the word of God. I dare you to try the word of God. Apply the word of God to your life. If you don't know much about it, you can start with a word. Start with a word, a word will turn into a verse. You start with that verse, that verse will turn into a paragraph. Start with a paragraph, a paragraph will turn to a chapter. That chapter will lead to you understanding a book. Once you understand one book, you can understand the rest of the books. But we have to have a commitment to growing in the word of God. Amen. We see this with Jesus Christ as our example. And we want St. John's to be a place where people can come and feel welcome. Where they grow in worship. And feel free to worship the way God would have them to worship. Be empowered and worship, tear down strongholds and worship. And we need to be discipled and grow in the word. Have the word shape and mold us. Have the word teach us and have the word transform us. Let this mind be in you that is also in Christ Jesus. We need the word. The doors of the church are open. You desire to join up with this branch of Zion in order to give your life to Christ. Please come. Please come. For those who are looking for a church home, please come. You can come as a candidate of baptism. You can come in your Christian experience. You can come for watch care. When you come, know that the Lord Jesus Christ welcomes you. He welcomes you to worship in spirit and in truth. He welcomes you because he is the word. The Bible teaches us that in the beginning was the word and the word was with God and the word was God. And also in John 1 14, the word became flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld his glory as the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Come, beloved. Well, maybe what's happening today is that we're all family in church and we need to be prayed up. We've been in a demonic attack. We feel a need for prayer. Give the Lord a try. Come, beloved. Let us pray with you. We will pray with you. Come, beloved. The prayers of the righteous availeth much. That is the word. We ought to pray without ceasing. That is the word. If my people who are called by my name, would humble themselves and pray. Come, beloved, that is the word. We pray for children. If there's a child in here today who desires prayer, please come. We will pray with you and pray for you. God answers our prayers.
there's no reason to carry all this baggage. We can give it to the Lord. Let's give all of our cares to the Lord. Let's do that. We're praying for our folks online. I hear the spirit of the people online. We're praying for you. We're praying for your children. We're praying for your family. We're praying for your health and strength. We're praying that you stay encouraged with all that you have going on. It is my prayer that we grow in the word. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. He is a good God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you. We magnify your holy name. We love you. Thank you, Lord. Let us pray. Gracious and wise Heavenly Father, we love you. We praise your holy name. We thank you for your Holy Spirit and we thank you for the word. Pray right now, dear Lord God, for the children of St. John's Baptist Church. We ask, Heavenly Father, that you would teach us to teach them. Teach us not just to walk before them, but to be gentle and to reason with them in the word. We pray for every child that's represented here, every, every child who's not able to come through the doors today. We pray for the children of St. John's and those who are in other churches and in the world. We pray that the church, dear Lord God, will be a place where children learn to worship you in spirit and in truth because you are worthy. Yes, Heavenly Father, we know you have provided so many good things that are necessary in life. But there's nothing more important for survival than having a relationship with you be empowered by your Holy Spirit and growing in the world. So lead us, Lord. Lead us to be a spirit-filled church walking in the authority of your word. We be eternally grateful. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. If all hearts and minds are clear, we're now prepared for our benediction. Now unto him was able to keep you from falling and present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God our Savior be glory and majesty, dominion and power both now and forevermore. And all God's people say, Amen. 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 Please feel free to greet your neighbor in Christian love. Amen. If you're online, feel free to say hello to a fellow member that is online. Amen. Amen. Let's fellowship. Thank you, Lord.